Hey guys and welcome to a brand new game series on the channel, Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. I'll have to be honest, I'm actually really looking forward to playing this. I love adventure games, I, lo I love a good mystery, so I've been looking forward to this for a while. From what I've seen in the previews, this one's going to be a little bit different because we're going to be playing as a young Sherlock Holmes before he was a well-established detective. And I know a very important person is missing from this game, and that's John Watson, which is going to be weird for us because, I mean, I, every game I've played, every movie I've seen, there was Sherlock and there was John Watson. So I'm just very, very interested to see which direction Frogwares took this. So without further ado, let's just get to it. Ginger, that's what you need. A mouthful of the good stuff and you'll see the back of any seasickness. Oh, thank you for your support, John. Don't suppose you actually brought any ginger? No, I don't get seasick. Terrific. Don't worry, Sherry. We've almost arrived at Cordona. I can see land through the porthole. So much for docking by tea time. The captain seemed more interested in his maids than in his maps. Oh, he sure looked grumpy. Cheer up. We're back where we grew up. It's exciting. What's changed? What's the same? Ugh. I'm starting to question whether the weeks-long journey was worth it. Traveling all this way, enduring this indignity simply to visit a grave. Even if it is my mother's. Ah, that's just Mycroft's nonsense, still rattling around in your head. Try to forget what he said. I have. I believe it was that this is a performative farce, a feeble excuse to avoid responsibilities, and that there was nothing to be gained from it. You needed to do this. Enough of the self-pity and doubt. So we're a little late. What of it? We'll retire to the hotel and visit her in the morning. It'll be worth it. Thank you, John. And if you want to notify the captain's wife of his indiscretions, I will not stand in your way. Ah, oh, at last. I'm quite ready to get off this cursed boat. Come on. We'll go together. Hey, Sherry, come on, catch up. Yes, yes. Welcome to Il Palazzo de Luso, sir. If you need something, sir, please inquire at reception. If you need something, sir... Welcome to Il Palazzo de Luso, sir. We just need your signature. Would you kindly sign these papers, sir? Sure, I will. There you are. Ah, Mr. Holmes. Uh, yes, we have room 221 prepared for you. I see it was reserved for two people. Uh, would you like a second key? Oh, uh, no, I, I think we'll stick together. Very good. Rooms are upstairs, sir. Welcome to Cordona. Hurry up, Sherlock. I want to see our room. Okay, oh, where is our room? The view. I arrived at Cordona, the island where I spent my childhood accompanied by my only friend, John. It was late evening, but I have a room booked at the hotel. Your room is upstairs, sir. Number 221. Okay, thank you. Hurry up, Sherlock. I want to see our room. I hope there's a balcony with a view. The feel of this game is a little bit different than the other games. This one seems a lot lighter, where the other ones were sort of dark and gloomy. This is kind of nice. Okay, I can't walk into these doors, can I? Dear James, 
I read your treatise on the binomial theorem with great interest, and although some parts of it still remain unclear for me, I must say that you have done an impressive amount of research. I strongly recommend you publish as soon as possible, for I anticipate a great and wide practical usage of your method as soon as it, is be as soon as it becomes known. Sincerely yours, Professor Gilbert. So this is a letter lost in the hotel to James from a professor. So that might be one of our clues for one of the cases that we're going to be solving. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Okay, it looks like we have to go this way. And from what I understand, we're going to have to eavesdrop on some people and learn clues that way as well. I guess uh, we're going to see as we go along. What's over here? Okay, apparently I can't talk to you. Okay, let's try to find room 221. It's 223. 224, so 221 will be this way. Here we go. I apologize, sir, but your room is not yet ready. Perhaps in the meantime you would like to relax in the foyer? Tonight the restaurant is offering a complimentary Marlin ceviche to all our guests. Let's check what they have on offer. Okay, I guess we're gonna go to the foyer and eat. Let's check what they have on offer. How come I never see you walking beside me? What's the deal? It's weird because we were walking and we were alone and he's here. See? He's not here. John, what's going on? Okay, is this the foyer? No, this is the reception. I guess this is the bar. Hey, Sherry, just our luck. If seafood's not to your taste, everyone loves Benedict's Batch. Our poached eggs with hollandaise sauce. If seafood's not to your taste, everyone loves Benedict's Batch. Our poached eggs with hollandaise sauce. So I guess these guys, once we interact with them, they're going to say the same thing over and over. But you never know, because they might have more to say. So Benedict's batch is eggs. And he's pointing somewhere? What's he doing? Let's see what we find out in our book. All right, here. A medium. John, haven't we been through this already? Come on, it's not like we've got anything better to do. Excuse me, sir, but I believe Mr. Galich is conducting a seance at the moment. Perhaps you'd care to have your portrait drawn while you wait? Why? Pardon me? Why should I sit for a portrait? I... Sir... It's art. It doesn't need a why. It is its own justification. All things require justification, be they objects, systems, or beliefs. How about art as the lens through which we see the truth of the world? That's backward. Truth is not subjective and not complicated. It's just the truth. It either is or it isn't. You do not need a lens to see it, just an open mind. Ha! Huh. That seems rather close-minded. Truth, like beauty, is in the eye of the beholder. So tell me, what do you see? Mediocrity. Come now, Sherry, what did he do to deserve that? The servant mentioned ceviche at the bar, Sherry. You should grab us some, and I'll find us a table. I'm starving. So, we have a mission. A 
Okay, let's go get some, some ceviche, I guess. Okay, time to check if John found us a nice table for the evening. All right, where could John be? There Sherry, he is. I'm over here with my new Ursine companion. Why is he calling me Sherry? Okay. Cordona's even quieter than I remembered. It's going to be a long evening. Ah, oh, come now, Sherry. What say we amuse ourselves with a little game? What were you thinking? Oh, promise me it isn't nonsense. After being cooped up on that boat, I am itching for activity. No. As you can see, someone left a cane on our table. I simply thought you could identify its owner. Ah, uh, so it is nonsense. It'll take me a minute, John, at most. Well, then, you can deliver it to him as well. Deliver it to him? <laughs> then what are the staff here for? Aesthetics? Oh, stubborn, Sherry. Too stubborn. You wanted something to do. Slapping oneself in the face is also something to do. That doesn't make it worthwhile. But all right. Let me take a look. All right, looks like we have our first case. Return the cane to its owner. Okay, and we need to find some clues about it. The hand grip is a head of a golden Javanese statue, probably stolen from a temple. The dents suggest it has been used as a bludgeon. Interesting. The cane is made of ebony, it's worn uncared for, and bears the scars of numerous hits. So that's used for fighting? What else we got? We got two out of three clues. Let's see what's here. The cane is made of ebony. It's worn uncared for and bears the scars of numerous hits. All right, so we got that one already. A crest depicting a bulb of garlic in a meadow, perhaps the Fielding family or meadows, or Craven from the old English name meaning garlic place. This cane is an expensive and ostentatious weapon. Its owner must be vain, volatile, and of noble English blood. Take it with you, Sherry. Let's return it to its owner. All right, I hope you noted down your observations in your casebook. But how are you gonna find this nobleman? The cane itself is not enough. I may have to ask other guests if they saw who was here. Sherlock can ask bystanders about a piece of evidence. May I ask for your assistance? That's a question. There were three people at the table. A couple and a retired Navy officer. That's definitely his cane. Observers weren't sure what happened to the couple, but the Navy officer was seen going out to the front garden for some air. I have to find them. Well, even with your keen senses, Sherry, I doubt you'll find the cane's owner on your first try. I tell you if I and knew, but unfortunately... would you be confident I... enough to bet on it, my friend? Why not? Let's see how good you really are. So let's go into the garden. So, who looks like a Navy officer? I think this person's smoking here. Not that one, huh? You lost the bet, Sherry. But don't let that stop your search for the Navy officer. Okay, I was wrong. So there was a challenge from John. Help me, please. Ex excuse me? What? I'm not sure I know. Hmm. 
Okay, it looks like this person. Are you able to help me? My dear fellow, you're talking to the right man. The Navy officer, Mr. Rose, was sitting at our table with the noble couple. The man talked about yachting and the lady was fidgeting with the cane. Perhaps she put it aside and her husband forgot to take it when they went to meet the medium. Now I have a perfect excuse to enter the seance room. So we are going to hey, see the medium. Sherry, don't we now have the perfect excuse to visit the seance? Yes, we do. I'm just going to give the cane to its owner. You will not persuade me to take part in this show. So to find the cane's owner, I have to look at the former Navy officer. Who went the... Okay, we found them. But now we have to go to the seance, which is where. See what we find out in the book. Today, only the famed medium Luca Galici performs a seance. Witness him summon the spirits of beloved relatives and celebrities. John wants me to visit the medium. We must wait for the seance to end in the meantime. Find myself a table, enjoy the music, and relax. Okay, so let's look for the seance. Should be somewhere on the main floor, I guess, right? <laughs> this guy's guarding something, so maybe the seance? Okay, what do you think, John? Come on, if you hurry, perhaps we'll see the ghost. This hotel, this island, it's full of thieves! First my cane, now the diamond. Take your hands off me! Do you even know who I am? Hey boy, that's my cane! I get that a lot, it's a very common design. What? No, that's a custom made! A joke. A joke. It was left at my table in the restaurant. I thought it deserved to be returned. Well, I'll be... It is rare to encounter a straight-fingered true penny these days. What a gentleman. But I must ask, how did you know I was the rightful owner? I guess we have to observe him. Okay, swollen red skin. Expensive and new clothes, rich and fashionable. Oh, he likes to fight. A head of garlic. So that's just like on the cane. Yeah, he loves to fight. He definitely uses a cane to beat people up. An ill Englishman on a resort or bored British nobleman? What do you guys think? Which one would you choose? Let me know in the comments what you think. And I'm not sure. I think he's a bored British nobleman. He's rich. He's rich and fashionable. Swollen reddish skin, so maybe he has a rash. Hmm. I think he's a bored British nobleman.
Simple deduction. Your cane told me everything I needed to know. I was after a strong middle-aged man with a keen interest in adventure, noble blood, and affection for strong drink. And if one were to go further, one may even be able to extrapolate your name from your heraldic symbol, Lord Craven. Marvelous. Simply marvelous. That's me, Lord Andrew Craven. You are the real medium. You hear that, Emma? Well, you found my cane. Perhaps you can locate my diamond, too. Yes, you should do it. It will be child's play for you, Mr... Holmes. And if a child can do it, then I'm sure the local police can suffice. The police? Why bother? I know this Harlequin stole it. The only question is, where is it hidden? Fine. Give me my stick and I'll resolve the matter myself. This thief almost confessed after a single punch. Hmm. I suspect a beating may result in answers of questionable veracity. Fine. I shall spare you and he the trouble if you first answer me this. You insist the medium robbed you during the seance. But what occurred exactly? Ah! It was a dirty trick. We were sitting here in the dark, chanting and holding hands, as expected. Then something began to appear from the medium, like a, a cloud or a bubble. The swindler called it ectoplasm. Ah, yes. Common in the spiritualist trade, and quite the spectacle. Indeed. Perhaps too much. My beloved Emma screamed in horror, and I stood to defend her, attacking that cursed ghost. How brave. But my hand hit nothing. The medium jumped away from me, and Emma fainted. I lit the candle, and the diamond was gone. How does a priceless diamond become the subject of a seance? It is an unusual accoutrement. Emma wished to speak with its former owners. My grandfather told us it belonged to a Raja, an Indian king. So you were summoning long-dead Indian royalty, and, pray tell, you were expecting him to converse in English? To be frank, Mr. Holmes, I don't believe in ghosts. But Emma was fascinated by the idea of meeting a real king, even a dead one. Well, a crown is a crown. Can you describe the stone itself? A yellow diamond, not less than a hundred carats, and perfectly egg-shaped. There is not another like it. Stay here, and don't touch anything. I'm going to investigate further. Don't fret, I'll be keeping a close eye on this thief. Alright guys, we're gonna solve the case of the missing diamond in the next episode. We solved our first case, the missing cane. It was interesting, but I think right now it's the game is just trying to teach us how to play. So it was okay. We'll see what happens uh, further along. Let me know how you guys would have solved the first case. Do you think he was a noble Englishman or a sick Englishman? I'll see you guys in the next episode. Don't forget to like and subscribe.